Hi, this is Dave with DRH Acrylic Creations. Today we're going to be working on with the colors Honeycomb and Crimson. My pillow paint's going down. This is PPG Multi Pro in eggshell. I get this at Home Depot. I love the way the consistency and the way it flows. And it does a beautiful job of holding up the color layer. So it's my go-to paint, especially when I'm working with the white. Our first color down is going to be Honeycomb. This is a This Little Piggy pigment. Started out dry, add a little bit of Josonia varnish, and then uh, my pouring medium to uh, complete the, uh, the process. I'm putting down a nice swath here, and basically it's going to be an undercoat layer for what's going to come, come later. So this is a healthy amount of this because I really want this color to stand up. This is going to be uh, Azarian Crimson Hue, and this is a golden paint. Um, this is a beautiful crimson, but because of its opacity, it blends really well with everything around it. So I really love this paint. This is Pearl White. It's a Joe Sonia product. And the Pearl White is, uh, as it implies, it is a pearlesque color. Next down is going to be Burnt Umber, and this is a, another Joe Sonia product. Joe Sonia products are, all of their, their paints, their acrylic paints are heavily pig pigmented, and they work beautifully for this. Okay, I've decided I want a little bit more of that honeycomb, so I picked it back up and I'm adding it in the other direction. So uh, it's contrary to, or in, in contrary motion to what was there before. Okay, next I'm picking up my one of my swiping tools and putting some Payne's Gray uh, on the back of it. What's going to this? This is going to uh, serve as a full uh, back or pillow paint or back color. So I'm putting this on top of the color layer. Give it a nice even coat across the top. I don't know about anybody, anyone else, but in, in kindergarten, we, for me, we did this art project where we painted or we, we colored with crayons a, a colorful background. And then we covered it up with black uh, crayon and scraped it to reveal our design underneath. It was a great, great project. This is kind of the same thing only done with paints. And all I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I get decent coverage all the way across. Okay, I'm gonna pick up my cell activators next. This is Iridescent Gold by Amsterdam. I'm gonna spread this nice and a nice layer on the back of my swiping tool. I want it to be a thin layer to start with for this first one. And we actually have three uh, cell activators today. Next one is going to be twi uh, titanium white. Now these are mixed three parts of Australian Floetrol to one part paint. And that's what creates the cells. Just want to get enough on the back here that the white will show up, but not predominate. And last year is uh, Lamp Black, and it's mixed exactly the same way. It's more of a consistency thing. Okay, nice even swipe here. I'm more interested in the cells, because that's what I'm going to be playing with, than the design here. You'll see here and why that, why that is the case here in just a second. I do a little bit of scoop and drag, pull out some of these cells and create some motion.
And once that's done, I'm gonna pick up my uh, hair dryer and gonna blow this out. Now, I'm blowing up an awful, awful lot of uh, pillow paint here. And it's not the look I was looking for when I went, when I went set out today. I wanted more of that Payne's Gray and less of the pillow paint. I wanted the pillow paint to act as a, to give a 3D effect and some depth. But as you'll see here in a minute, once I'm finished with this, um, it may have felt like a fail or a failure while I was doing it, but I really do like the final result. I'll let you be the judge though. Let's just say that I think it's a happy accident. Okay, I'm taking some uh, time and just gonna spin this out and get this paint to not only cover the, the board, it's a 14 inch round and in essence it's balsa wood. It's not very thick, it's about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. I will tell you this most likely, uh, will most likely warp on me, but it doesn't matter because what I'm gonna do with this piece is like several of the pieces I've done in the past, I'll turn this into a clock, resin it up, get some numbers on it, put the mechanism on it, and it turns into a beautiful wall hanging for, for a clock. So that's the plan with this one. Now I'm just trying to get the, all the paint, get all the paint that needs to move off the board. looking now making sure that it I caught all the all the the, the board and uh, any spots along the edges that may not have gotten paint and it's about here that I really kind of figured out well not what I wanted but boy I'm okay with that You'll see here in just a second. Give you a chance to take a closer look. I think with that, we're about ready for the flyover. I want you to notice I got some huge, juicy cells on this, and I really, that's the thing that I really took me by surprise. And I couldn't be much happier with this, this mistake of a piece. If you found today's video useful, I'd invite you to leave me a like Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and ring the bell for notifications of future videos that I put out. It's my goal to put out two per week, and I'm hoping you're finding them both enjoyable and useful. Thanks for being here. Bye now.